Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warp Podcast. And I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. What's up, man? What is going on, sir? I know that you are on cloud nine. And everyone who's, you know, anyone who's just tuned in for the first time, if they just look at your uh, back room there and see all that wonderful red and gold. Yes, sir. That is what we are talking about today. The Super Bowl. And uh, is that is that coming up here? That, that's coming up here. Believe it or not, that's on Sunday. And, I forgot uh, all about it. We got a lot of things going on, and I highly doubt you forgot about it. Anybody who bleeds red and gold, y'all know, y'all y'all all came out the woodwork on social media this week. So it's all good. It's all good. Um, what's that storyline so- in all the? all the Marvel movies that, you know, you play the hero long enough that you live to be the villain. That's where, the, <laughs> that's where the chiefs are now. That's where I'm going to start off with, because we are talking all things Super Bowl, And this first thing that I want to talk about are the chiefs, the new Patriots. In other words, are they the team that everyone loves to hate? Um, there's a constant unwavering cycle in American sports. We love you when you're on the way up. We applaud you when you reach the top. We hate you when you stay there too long. So, Kansas City Chiefs, welcome to the loathing zone. Uh, You were a cute story before, but now America is tired of you, your star quarterback, your teddy bear looking coach, your celebrity girlfriend, and most of all, your consistent presence in the Super Bowl. So, I'm going to open this up by asking you, have you achieved patriot syndrome yet not looking at it as a chiefs fan because i know if y'all won 10 in a row yet you wouldn't mind not yet not yet we're 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 definitely have crossed over to the man the chiefs again you know that type of thing we've crossed over to that but not not hated just yet patriots weren't necessarily hated because they won they hated because they cheated and won that's that's what I wanted to uh, touch on. In my mind, in in my opinion, I mean, I, I have no skin in the game. I have no skin in the game. Neither team right. in the Super Bowl is my team. But looking at it from an objective point of view, you could name a a scenario in which every single New England team went to the Super Bowl, what they did or didn't do to get there. For the Chiefs. It's just been winning football games. No scandals, nothing like that. I applaud you for that, sir. Well, you can't say that because the, the, their first three Super Bowls, they were scandal-free. This one hasn't was, had a scandal either. You didn't cheat to get no, there. No, no, not yet. No, not yet. No, I'm not saying that we're going to. I'm just saying not yet, but we're just in. we're still in that early stage. The, the the beautiful thing about hating the Patriots is if you look strictly at Tom Brady, he actually played two different Hall of Fame careers in the same career. He had two Hall of Fame careers in his one career. Would you explain that to the audience? Well, in his first, what, five, six years as a starter, he won three Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. Didn't go back for 10. Mm-hmm. And then won another four. So name, you know, Joe Montana, four Super Bowls. Yeah. You know, uh, hell, I mean, Troy Aikman, three Super Bowls. There you go. Two Hall of Fame careers, one career. One for one player. I can see that. But I think, you know, the Patriots were hated because of the cheating. The fact, you know, we are, this is America. So, you know, you can't win forever and. Everybody hates you, you know, and obviously everybody thinks that the refs are not wearing black and white anymore. They're wearing red and white and, you know, I'm just here. I love it. You know, it's, it's, it's finally cool to, to, to get some of that hate. I'm all right with it. I know you are. I know you are. Um, But I don't think we're the new Patriots just yet. Let us win Sunday. Then we'll see. Cause if we lose Sunday, What's the new scenario going to be? Well, here's the thing. 
even if you lose, you're not out of this thing yet as far as future Super Bowls go. Think about it. You won a Super Bowl last year, and it was, quote unquote, a rebuilding year. You can say retooling if you want to. Who called it a rebuilding year? Uh, Y'all did. We didn't. No, the Chiefs did. Just saying. Right. I mean, I mean just technically, just rebuilding when you think about it, got rid of Tyreek Hill. Technically, when you think about it, though, every year for every team is a retooling year to some degree. Oh yeah, most definitely. But they're just saying it's a rebuilding year because Tyreek Hill was traded. You know, he's not the only player in the NFL that's been traded that the right. other team. You know, I, I, I never considered it a rebuilding year. Now, if we don't sign Willie Gay, Sneed. Chris Jones in this offseason, if we don't sign one or two of those three players, then yes, it'll be a rebuilding year the next year. Do you think you can sign all three? No. I And I wouldn't worry about signing Chris Jones or Willie Gay. I would back the Brinks truck up for Willie, for Sneed, Legereus Sneed. Really? Over and, Chris Jones? Yeah, Chris Jones is old. What's he got, another couple years? Maybe? I, w- I would call them one and one A. And I'm not necessarily putting one of them ahead of the other. He's 30-something, and you can – yes, he's a game wrecker when it comes to defensive line, Mm -hmm. but you can go find another defensive lineman that can be 75 to 85% of what Chris Jones is. Okay. There's not very many people that can play cornerback like like Jerry Sneed. He only gave up one freaking touchdown all year, and that was last week versus the Ravens. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. He shut down Tyree Kill both games. Tyree Kill, he shut down Tyree Kill so good in the playoff game that Tyree Kill tweeted, damn, Sneed jammed me to Cancun. Mm. Did you see that so, tweet? But I, I agree know, with S- you. Sneed is the priority. If I was, you know, just taking my GM hat on, I would actually franchise tag Chris Jones because he's he's franchise taggable. And trade him under the franchise tag for a bunch of draft picks. Hmm. That's, That's what I would a good do. Idea. And then, and then that would free up money, and you're able to pay Willie Gay. I can see that. I can see that. Um, now, on the flip side of it, I would say that y'all are the new Patriots in the fact that not you, not everybody, but I will say a lot of the fan base has become very arrogant it's that well we're supposed to be here every year now there's a thin line when you say that because everybody expects their team to be there every year well unless you're a cleveland browns fan but um or reality sets in in december or a bronco fan or a raider fan or a carolina panther fan or, I mean, we can go on. They're not every fan base thinks they're going to be in the AFC Championship game, a.k.a. Super Bowl, every year. No, but you hope to be. You you pray that you have a shot. There's probably maybe a half a dozen teams that actually think that they genuinely have a shot to make the Super Bowl every year. Yeah. Not even the Cowboys think they're going to make the Super Bowl every year. Yeah, they shouldn't. They talk about it, but they don't really think it, I don't think. I would I would put and, and I'm Raider fan, I would put Raider fan in that same league with Cowboy fan. We have lofty expectations every year, but come December reality sets in. And maybe it's just because I'm not in Raider conversations very much, but uh, you know, just with you and a couple of my other buddies uh that are Raiders fans here in Kansas City. I don't really see that from a Raiders fan as you you know say with cowboy fan you know cowboys every year we them boys this is our year you know i don't ever see that with the raiders these last 15 or so years we've learned to uh not be as vocal about it until we do something gotcha and and i'll go to my grave telling you this if we hadn't waited till week nine to fire josh mcdaniels just give me two weeks sooner we might have backdoored into the playoffs even if we went one and out yeah, I mean, yeah, what's your coach's name again? Antonio Brown. Yeah, he uh he he righted that uh, wait. Shit. Antonio Pierce. What the hell? I'm I'm going somewhere with Antonio Brown later on, but but uh 
Yeah, I mean, he did something good with that team. So, yeah, Antonio Pierce they, is. You know, if they would have, if they would have did two weeks sooner, maybe, maybe they might have backdoored it. Now, I will say this though, for as far as Pierce, and this is all I'm gonna say about the Raiders, if he can replicate that going into this season, uh, excuse me, going into next season from start to finish, will be good. But yeah, it's I think going it's to be, be very, very difficult. I think it's going to depend on who they get at quarterback. Yeah. And who they're going to get to play call. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I was the GM of the Broncos, the Raiders, or the Chargers, I would already have EB on speed dial just so he can coach against the Chiefs because he knows how they, they work. You would think. You would think. And I thought that EB might be a dark horse for uh, Harbaugh and the Chargers, but I believe they're, they, they're getting ready to hire the ex-Ravens, Bills, offensive coordinator, mm. uh, Roman, I, somebody. I don't know what it is that Eric B. Enemy has done, said, or whatever, that has really rubbed owners and coaches the wrong way because if you if you look at his track record he produces winning teams even the uh almost called them redskins the washington commanders <clears throat> they were much better than Red they have Roman been in Redskins. previous years oh yeah no i agree and if, but i if, don't understand i don't understand either but that's we can talk about that on another show yeah, we're 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 gonna keep it Super Bowl focused, um, but yeah, just but just finishing out this thing as far as the team that you love to hate, I do get that that can be any team, especially when they're in the top for a long time. What I do want to touch on about it though is, for all the people that are coming down on Taylor Swift, now. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't listen to anything that she's made. I could probably only name one song of hers, but there's no need for the Taylor Swift hate. She didn't ask CBS to throw the camera on her every five minutes, and the NFL is only gonna do that because the NFL is a cash cow. They are bringing new people to the TV uh, screens. They are bringing new people to the stadiums. They are making money. Why would they stop? It's not her fault. Yeah, I, I, I think this is where the nation, where they start to hate the Chiefs, is going back to last year, the storyline was Jason and Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. Their po their podcast, New Heights, blew up. They played each other in the Super Bowl. It You know, Mama Kelsey became a star. So it was a big howdy-do. And the NFL made a lot of money off the Kelsey family last year. So that was thrown in your face the entire yeah. year. Okay. So now we rolled around to this year. Now all of a sudden Travis called a shot with Taylor Swift. They're together. The Chiefs are still winning. So now something else is being thrown into your face. I think that's where the hate is. It's just because it's just right there. You know, if if we weren't if we were not winning, this Taylor Swift thing wouldn't even be a, a story. I, I mean, look at the pack. Look at the Packers player that's married to Simone Biles. It's not even a story. No, it is not. Flipping and she's at every the, game as well. Flipping it off the Chiefs real quick and talking about the Niners. Let's let's be clear. This team is no slouch. Now, whether they win or lose, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But I think that their coach has a lot to prove and a lot riding on this game. Whereas Kansas City and Big Red, they ain't got nothing to prove. They can play fast and loose. The Niners have to play a nearly flawless game. I disagree. Um, I think there's a lot of pressure on Kansas City to win uh, just because they want to, and it could be self-inflicted pressure, but they want to be the back-to-back -back champions. Something mm -hmm. hasn't been done in 20 years. So I think that's a big deal. Um, I don't necessarily think 49ers are the better team. I mean, on paper, maybe. 
Um, oh I don't no, I don't think, think they're the better team. Well, you what did you you said something at the very beginning that you said they're a something team. I said they're no say? slouch. No slouch. Well, you know, define I slouch. Mean, let, let's make no mistake about it. We know the Raiders weren't the better team, but for one game, they were that day. They were that day. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's not like that you guys are scrubs either. So, but I digress. We're we're giving we're giving well, Las Vegas Raiders too much airtime. This is about the team, the Chiefs, the winners, winners of the AFC West. Um, I, 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 I think that yes, the Forty ers have a lot of pressure on them. I mean, especially the head coach because what he he lost as the Atlanta coordinator that twenty eight to three debacle against Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was up ten nothing against us a few years ago and lost that by eleven points. It was twenty one um, to ten at halftime. No, nah, it was uh, twenty to ten. Twenty to ten. Yeah, because yeah, we whatever won it was he blew it. Yeah, it was ten points, and we won by eleven. It was thirty-one to twenty final score, um, and we scored all twenty-one points in the last seven minutes of the game. But uh, the, the, what's the coach's what's his name for the Forty Nine ers? Uh, Shanahan, isn't it? Shanahan, yeah. He's he's never beaten uh, Andy Reid ever. Well, it's not looking good now. It's it's an offer. Um, and I think it's going to be another one, but I I don't think that the 49ers are as tough as people are laying them out to be. I just don't, I mean, just look at their two playoff wins. Packers gave them everything they wanted in Detroit. If they had a better coaching staff, they'd have won that game. As I roll into these questions, I'm going to start off here then, because you mentioned the, the, the toughness. This is one of those rare weeks where there's a week between the AFC and NFC ch- championship games and the Super Bowl. Do you think that extra week helps either one of these teams? I think it helps them both, but it's been that it's always been a week in between the two. Not, not every year. Uh, it, it has for the last 15 to 20 years. Has it? Uh, yeah, it's been that way for a long time. So I think I, right to the end of the 90s is when maybe it was one time, but it always was two weeks in between. Um, so it's that's not a big deal. I think, yes, rest-wise, it's good for them. Uh, it's good for the Chiefs because Andy Reid, off, coming off a of bye, his record's pretty good uh, when he has two weeks to prepare. So that's, that's pretty good. I, I don't really think it being the Super Bowl and the fact that they both have to travel and things like that that – it's that big of an advantage or disadvantage for the for the week off. Yeah, because travel wise, you're already there. So yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you still had to travel. You know, you had to stay at home for one week, travel Sunday to get there Monday, and then now you're in the middle of all the hoopla that goes yeah. along with it before you can actually focus on the game. I do like the fact that the NFL banned all players that are participating in the game from uh, doing any gambling. That's going to cut back from any of these boneheads that might go out the night before and do something stupid. What do you mean? They can't go out in the casino and play cards? No gambling for either players from any team that's participating in the Super Bowl. If you're right. eliminated and you're just there, taking it all in, do whatever you want. But no Chief or no Niner can gamble right from now I, up until the final gun of the Super Bowl. Uh, I I didn't hear that. But yeah. I mean, I don't think that really counts. There's still strip clubs and shit to get into. Oh, well, yeah. They're going to do what they're going to do. But that'll, that'll get you in trouble, you know what I mean? That's true. Hey, um, swinging it back to these Chiefs, regardless of if they win or if they lose, do you do you consider them a dynasty? Um, if they lose, no. If they win, yes. Hmm. Okay. I, I want to talk about Taylor again, real quick. So, if you want to say, if you want to say AFC dynasty, okay, but dynasty in my mind is going to be the entire league, right? And yeah, normally, that's where I'm going with. and normally, three championships is that defining factor. Okay. No matter how many times you get there, has to be three wins. 
Yeah, you know, three and above is a dynasty. And the fact that we would have three in four years, yeah, would be the same as what the Cowboys did in the nineties. Mm -hmm. They won three in four years. That is true. All right. Um, I want to talk about current Super Bowl odds. Now, at the time that you know I was preparing, this the line may have changed. But we're going to go by where we are right now. As far as the 49ers and the Chiefs, the the spread has um, let me see. I think I think it was two and a half when I looked at it this morning. Okay, because I've got one and a half. So if it's gone to two and a half, do you think that'll hold? Uh, no. Chiefs are going to win, so. They're they're underdogs, so that that point spread's not going to matter. We're going to win outright. Okay. Um. The over under was forty seven and a half points. That's a lot of points. I'm gonna I'm gonna say under, but what do you say? What's the over under? Forty seven and a half. I got maybe forty five to forty seven total points being scored. Like I'm looking twenty seven twenty. 24, 27, 21. I honestly believe it's going to be more like that Ravens game. Maybe a few more right, points. But we, right, but we should have had 25 points in that game. Should have, but the final score was 17 to 10. I'm right, thinking because it might of be coaching like, decisions. I think it might be like 23 to 17 or something like that. Well, that's still 24, 17, 27, 20. I think we're going to win by touchdown. Yeah. But but that's well under that 47 and a half. So well 27 to 20 is 47 points. So that's not well under 47 and a half. No, no. I didn't say 27 <laughs> to 20. I said 27 to seven. I said 24 to 17. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Which that is, is what, under. five 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 points under. Hey, when you're gambling, that's enough to lose. That half a point will kill you. Yeah, it sure will. And uh, kids, if you are a gambler, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. I just want to throw that in there. Ricky and Big Show are not endorsing gambling any way, shape, or form. All right, just for fun, interceptions, Purdy. Uh, one interception. You take the over or the under on that? I'm sorry, say that again. Interceptions, Brock Purdy. Going to throw one. You say over or under? We don't really, our defense doesn't really turn the ball over. We don't really get a whole lot of turnover, so I'd probably say under. Mahomes, one. Over or under? Under. He's not going to throw any picks. All right. Touchdowns. Kelsey, going to score? That's probably. Easy one. Probably. Kittle, will he score? Probably. Pacheco. Probably. McCaffrey. Probably. Oh, damn. You can, <laughs> this is a close game. <laughs> well, that's 14 points right there for each team. So Valdez Scantling. Is he going to catch a ball or score? Score. No. Brandon Ayuk. Mm, I'm going to say no. Okay. Who's your offensive sleeper during the Super Bowl for the Kansas City Chiefs? I'll be honest. If he plays, Kadarius Tony. You think, think I'm he's playing? got something to prove, huh? Yes. I, I if if they actually because he's he's active. Um, I, I I would say he would. He's got something to prove. He's seen MVS out there the last few weeks making amends. Here, here's here's who I got for Kansas City's offensive sleeper. Who's y'all's second tight end? Blake Bell. I think he's going to do a couple of amazing things because they're going to be too focused on Kelsey. Mm, that, I'm not really. I, I'm not worried. I don't think so. I mean, no more than what normal. They're not going to be able to guard Kelsey. Okay. Who's your offensive sleeper for the 49ers? Shit, I don't even know who's on their offense. 
Uh, Who's I don't think he's a sleeper. Wide receiver? Who's I, I don't think he's wide a sleeper, receiver? but um, I'm going to say Debo Samuel is going to show out. I don't know, man. For you to say that CMC is going to show out, and I know you didn't say that, but people are saying this, that CMC is going to show out, the Kittle's going to show out, that Debo's going to show out, you obviously have not watched any Chiefs defensive tape. No, I, I, I'm not saying any of them are going to show out. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying I'm not saying you in general. But if Debo is the one catching the balls, I guarantee you, Sneed will be put on him, and he will no longer catch any more balls. I would think that Sneed would be on IU. Sneed's going to be on the number one wide receiver. That that should be Brandon Ayuk then. Not if Debo's catching all the balls. Oh, you mean if he starts to get hot and yeah, okay, they're going to okay. put their yeah. But then McDuffie ain't no slouch either. No, no, that's true. You know, and then our two our two safeties are pretty dope too. Although I wish Brian Cook was playing, but um, yeah, I yeah, no. Nah. Who's your defensive sleeper for Kansas City? Defensive sleeper, yeah. tranquil. Okay. What about San Francisco? Man, I don't really know who their defensive guys are. Uh, it doesn't matter. The the the, the water boy. <laughs> He's taking care of some thirsty players. Good for him. <laughs> That's some high quality H2O. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. So now we get to the tougher stuff as we wrap it up. Who do you got winning the game, even though we already know who you got? Um I've been, I mean, obviously, Chiefs, I have, but I've been debating on what kind of game it's going to be. I do not foresee it being a 38 to 34 football game like it was last year in the Super Bowl. I could be wrong because games change and uh mm -hmm. you know if we're if we're down, you know, Mahomes can do his thing. Right. I picked this score like two minutes after 49ers won the game last week. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick with it. But the Chiefs 24, 49ers 17. What? You do realize that's the same score I said a few minutes ago because yeah, I know that's, that's what I said I'm going twenty-seven with. to I said twenty-seven to twenty, twenty-seven, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty, somewhere in that arena. I was okay. going to go twenty-four twenty, but at twenty-four seventeen. All right, this is going to shock y'all. The Niners are going to win. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, I have the exact same score: twenty-four seventeen, Kansas City. I. And, and and even though this is a close score, I don't think the game will be this close. There might see, be a that's garbage exactly, touchdown for San Francisco. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. I, I This game is not going to be as close as that score dictates. Yeah. The, the Chiefs are going to dominate this football game. Okay, so since we've got them winning, we got them dominating, who's your MVP? Is it Patty Mahomes? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Not Kelsey. No. Okay. Because for Kelsey to have all those accolades, Patrick's going to have to throw him the ball. So Patrick is also going to have those, those stats. Now, I will go out on a limb on this. If our defense is dogging, like dogs, Sneed will be my dark horse MVP. Okay, okay. Who's going to score first, San Francisco or Kansas City? Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Kansas City because if we win the toss, we'll we'll defer and be on defense. They'll they'll go three and out, and then we'll we'll march down and score like we did against the Ravens. Here's my thing: the worst thing that can happen for the Niners is for their defense to make a play and do something stupid in the end zone. Remember that Niners fan? You don't post for happen. pictures until the game is over. It's gonna happen. We're gonna. It's. I. I think this is the the week that Brock Purdy comes back down to earth. Um. There's a reason why he was picked dead last in the NFL. 
Um, you know, he's not the second coming of Tom Brady. I I I can't give the 49ers credit for drafting him and him being so well because again, he was the very last pick in the draft. So it's not like he was a dark, ooh, let's keep him to the very last. You know, I don't think that was part of their strategy. They lucked into this guy, basically. Um, but it, you know, it's it's also a cool little uh strategy on how both coaches play or, mm -hmm. or build their team build their teams. Uh Shanahan gets um out of this world uh position players, wide receivers, tight ends, uh line, defensive line, linebackers, and gets a jag of a quarterback, just a guy, right? Yeah. Where the where the Chiefs have the best quarterback probably ever to breathe and then build the team around him. So it's definitely two total different philosophies. Um, so it's going to be kind of be fun on, to watch that aspect too. Okay. Circling back to Antonio Brown, not Pierce. What player do you think on either team is going to have just a stupid bonehead moment and mess something up? Uh, the Chiefs have been playing very, very, uh, disciplined. So I can't pick anything other than, you know, uh, Stupid false start or holding penalty from the offensive line. That would be Juwan Taylor, I think is his name. He'd be an easy one to pick. Again, an inopportune holding penalty. Um, now, here's my bonehead. I don't, really, I don't really know about the 49ers. Here's my bonehead. Remember I told you Debo Samuel's going to show out? Mm -hmm. He's also going to make a key mistake. He's going to fumble in a clutch situation. That, I'm down I can for see it. that happening. W did you get mailed the script already? No. No, I did oh, not. Okay. The NFL said that they would not allow me to read it. I'd have to watch it like everybody else. Got you. Just checking. And for all you conspiracy theorists out there, the colors are dark red and purple, not dark red and yellow for the Super Bowl logo. So uh, that theory is blown. Nah, it's really not. <laughs> we'll have to discuss that on different on a different podcast, but there's definitely more than that. Because they're saying that because of that logo, the NFL had to flip the script, so to speak. Mm. And then so have you seen the 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 Lays commercial with uh Marshawn Lynch and Robin Gronkowski and they're talking about yeah. every time you buy a chip it's it's like winning the Super Bowl. I've seen that. Okay. The part of the conspiracy theories of that is if you, you remember what color the confetti was that came out of the out of the bag. I don't even remember that color. Red and yellow. Oh, really? So that's okay. the conspiracy that they want the Chiefs to win. Wow. And if that's it, the case, God bless the God bless the NFL script writers, and I appreciate it because I'm telling you, the way you wrote the script in the nineties. Pour my heart out all those years. This is just sweet redemption as an adult. If there are NFL script writers, and I know we promise not to bring up the Raiders again, but why did you call a fumble a tuck? That's what I want to know, writers. Because that was 2001, and that was the same year that... Uh... Uh, 9-11. So the Patri it, was a, it was cool to be a Patriot that year. Patriotic. They had to win the Super Bowl. The script was in effect then. Yep. Wow. This has been a really good one. Football season's winding down. We uh we definitely got more great content for y'all, but I want anybody who's anybody who's listening or watching, leave us a comment. Let us know who you got winning and be bold. Give us the score. We both and you will rarely find us in agreement on these these shows, but today. We both got 20, 24 to 17 Chiefs. I want to hear from you. I may even do a window. It's going to be 24, 17, 24, 20, somewhere in that arena. Yeah. Now watch them score like 50 points and just blow everything for us. Man, that would be awesome if we scored 50 points. 
Well, if you're going to go, go big, make it 72. Yeah. Let's, let's just, I mean, I would love it to be like that beat down that the, that the Cowboys laid on the bills in 90, what two, what was it like 53 to seven or some shit like that. I'm, I'm okay with that. I would love to have a beat down like that. At, but, least, at least that's a beat down. You got Scott we Norwood we going do wide right when you could win the game. And that's a yeah, crusher. but that yeah, that was their first Super Bowl. By the time they got to the Cowboys, it was their third Super Bowl. They were already they'd already had it ran through them twice. That's true. Well, show appreciate you, man. It's been nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It has now, enjoyed. Now the we got to do is uh, sit back, watch the game. You got any uh, plans for where you're watching the game? What you doing? Nah, just on my couch. Make some make some chicken wings. May may partake in an adult beverage and uh, call it a night. I I will probably do something similar. Uh, order a couple pizzas and uh, definitely some beverages. Uh, and I might do that instead. I might order pizza and get the chicken wings. That- like there you go. Too, and I want to do shit. Huh, that's, that's a good idea. Oh no, that day I ain't doing nothing. I'm laying around from sun up to sun down, and you can best believe I'm I'm gonna soak it all in. Yes, sir. Even the old halftime show. While I got a few seconds, are you looking forward to Usher? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right i mean it's it's no j-lo and shakira but i'll I'll take it i guess i'm gonna have to find that one on youtube and play it back (laughs) right because her hips didn't lie no i digress hey thanks for tuning in everybody yes thank Uh, you don't forget to hit show hit take us on out of here hit the subscribe button hit the like button hit that little alarm button for when my man pops up the little things and you'll know that uh we're on board here Uh, absolutely we we do apologize we weren't on here last week, so hopefully we'll get a little bit more steady and you'll get weekly content. Um, I got some great ideas moving forward, so hopefully we can get those out to you guys and this will be a great year. Don't forget, tomorrow's not promised. Take your PTO today. Love y'all. Peace out. All right. Y'all take care.